Okay, Andy, now tell me again about the beginning, the genesis of PCAC and what was going on at that time? There used to be an organization called IMAC, and, and that was, what was the, the I, I forget IMAC. I do too. Do you want to put your time? Vern Hall was Okay. But it, 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 it was a community group that was to confer with the port, but it was short-lived. And that was some 15 years earlier. And then as, as we were doing the settlement, after the judgment was in our favor, uh, we said, okay, how do we manage the process for the mitigation of, of uh, the aesthetics? And so the natural and the logical course of events was is that PCAC had to get constituted, organized, and approved by the, the Harbor Commission before we could finalize the balance of the settlement agreement. Now, the language of PCAC, the, the fact that it was organized, as a result of the settlement agreement was not written into the body of the settlement agreement. And the port, in a sense, never took the local community seriously uh, with regards to mitigation and the impacts to, local, to the local uh, community until NRDC resolved the air issues, clean air resolved the air issues, their portion of the settlement agreement. And then the court thought they could just throw something together and the local community would roll over. And my role supporting the local community was to address their interests. And I said our interests at this moment in the negotiations uh, haven't been addressed at all. And let me tell you something, is that's just important to us as all this other stuff. So if you want this other stuff to go, we need to come to an agreement of how we're going to do the aesthetics mitigation and the processes. And at first, the court didn't believe, believe uh, uh, the, the, the homeowner groups that we would stick in uh, feet into the, into the, into the ground or whatever we were going to budge because we had nothing in it for ourselves. You know, and, and Janet and, and, and uh, others uh, contributed funds and time to make the litigation successful and then if we didn't take care of our interests, what was it all about? So that PCAC was, was approved put a certain process with flow charts of how how the work was to be done. And and the foundation was is and the intent was of the process was not to do a bunch of projects and say, hey, what are what are good ideas? But hey, what are the damages? Do the discovery on the damages. And then let's look for a reasonable remedy and mitigation. But the port turns to our face. It's not our business to turn over every stone and expose ourselves to litigation or liability. We're going to go to look for trouble. And so our intent was in the PCAC process and the aesthetics mitigation process the subcommittees that they would evaluate past, current, and present EIRs and do that discovery to come up with the nexus so that when, when it was a project, it could be done. But the court elected to make it like a contest. Hey, come up with these ideas, come up with these ideas. So they put the cart in front of the horse. Well, that that's... In, against the state lands policy. In other words, you're only supposed to remedy what's been damaged on or off the lands. But unless
unless you put it on the record, you can't mitigate off of poor lands. And so what we saw uh, several years ago that, that the uh, court had, had directed the community and squandered so much time that we needed to have a study that would take this due diligence out of the court's hands. Because the, the study that we're, we're planning on doing is not going to be controlled by the Port of Los Angeles. Because by definition, there's a conflict of interest. Their environmental department's job is to protect the business entity of the Port of Los Angeles. Their job is not to put the community first. And, and anyone that says otherwise is a pure out and out lie. Because that's inc inconsistent with every environmental department and every governmental agency and or private agency. Their job is to protect the entity that they work for. And all we want to do is hire people who know what they're doing, discover the information so that the people in the community understand what's going on, what's happening to them, and what the remedies are. And the way we've developed this program is interactive with state lands, as well as PCAC, and that department. And that'll then keep that process going, because the court the commission has disassociated itself with PCAC. At the last court commission meeting, when they extended the timeline because they refused to extend the cutoff date for the mitigation portion of the, the settlement, they were, they were asking all these questions because they didn't understand the system. They didn't know what was going on. That's how much they cared about PCAC. That's how much they care about the community. It's just not there. So we're hoping that this study goes through and we can do some fact-finding because in the near future, there's projects going to be done over in North San Pedro that are going to tear, tear San Pedro up. Well, who's going to do the fact-finding? The court? And how is it going to go on the legal record of a negative impact? John, John Q. Citizen going to come out and, with $5 million and say, okay, I want to do a study and, then, and I want to inform the people. And then these people, if they want to exercise their legal rights, can write to the EIR and get mitigation because that's the process. The actual process of building is, is that when you do a public notice in the EIR, the community has a right to comment to it. Right. But now how can the community comment on a highly complex issue? How can the community comment on, on, on facts that take time, equipment, because we're looking at getting monitoring systems, not just, you know, guesstimates and, 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 and hot air. And then we're going to present that to state land report and everything else. And then the next ER that's coming up in future ERs, the port can go ahead and use our data. We know that the port won't like it because if it's negative data, they won't like it. Thank if it's you. positive, then it's positive. But we want to do what the port should be doing. Right. And, and one of the things in the, this whole CEQA process is that the, the writers of, of CEQA never envisioned that the operating company, the lead agency, the developer, would all be the same entity. Everybody understands it's a flaw system. And the port has allowed this flaw system to go on to their benefit as a business entity. Define that. The port commissions its own study. Yes. It performs its own study. I mean, get down, that, that's what everybody doesn't understand. The environmental review is, is commissioned by the port, approved by the port, certified by the port. There is no oversight to review that environmental impact report. 